Hello, everyone. I just want to say thank you so much for joining us for yet another workshop. This is the last workshop of Friday's Women's Motorcycle Conference online. Um, I have the absolute pleasure of introducing you to not just an amazing woman, but a really wonderful close friend of mine, Lori Kilgirl Cannon. She is um, a resilient and beautiful soul who has done a lot of growing and soul searching um, since she had uh, kind of a falling out with motorcycling. Um, she's gonna tell you a little bit more about that. And I just wanna say thank you so much, Lori, for being here, for being present and for sharing uh, who you are with all of us. Um, so I'm going to disappear. I'll be in the background. I got your back. If you need anything, you just let me know. Uh, and thank you all, all of you watching so much for being here with us tonight. Oh, okay. Am I live? Is it showing me? It's still on Brittany. Nope, you're live. I'm live? Okay. So, hi, welcome. I'm Lori, and I will kind of preface this with how I got into motorcycling a little bit. I started riding in 2003. I am very fortunate in that I live very close to the Dragon, Tell the Dragon, Dragon's Tell, whatever name you want to call it by. And that's actually where I learned to ride a motorcycle. And Within about five months, I was already doing track days and just, I was having the time of my life on that motorcycle. You know, I loved the freedom, the speed, just the escape, everything that came with it. And I had a wonderful five years of riding with no incidents. And that brings us to February of 2008. It was a beautiful day in mid-February where you get those rare days and you're itching. It's like, okay, it's warm enough. I'm going to go ride. So I kind of looked through the stable of bikes that we had at the time between a couple sport bikes and a supermoto. And I went with my um, new to me Kawasaki 636. And I'd been riding back roads, rode around by Fontana Village. And it was nearing the end of the day and I, I was contemplating, do I go home? Do I do one more run? Well, my husband was up at the Dragon in his car and my friend showed up with her new supermoto and I was like, okay, I'll do one more run. It'll be great. And then I'll go on home before it gets too cold. And we're going into the five mile marker when you know, I was like, okay, I want to slow down just a tad so she can see my line. And then just mid-turn, something, it's a blind right-hander. And something told me, it's like, okay, just knock it down like a couple more notches. I, mean, I wasn't going very quickly anyway. I was like, just kind of back down a little bit because people blow this turn pretty often. And when I popped around that turd, it would, it was my worst fear as a motorcyclist. It was the day I had dreaded. There was another bike square in my lane. And at first I was like, okay, this is no big deal. He's going to go into the ditch. We'll pull up here off the side of the road. We'll help him pull his bike out, pull his bike out, make sure he's okay. And we'll all go on about our day. I mean, I'd help pick up dozens upon dozens of bikes out of the ditch at that point from the years of being up there. And, you know, so he sees me and he zigs when he should have zagged. And we ended up, you know, I'm on the brakes. I'm, a, you know, crawling to a stop whenever he hits me on a larger cruiser bike. And, you know, I, I remember kind of going forward and then I black out and all I hear is the sound of the metal, you know, the bikes crashing into each other. The next thing I know, I come to, I'm sitting on my butt, my feet are on the white line and my bike is laying on my back. 
and I know immediately I'm at the exit of a blind turn. There was a van that had just pulled over to let us by. I do not want to get hit again. So I, you know, I start immediately yelling. It's like, okay, somebody direct traffic, you know, somebody get this bike off of me. And sorry, my cats, if you can hear that. Um, so the, the man's wife, I can see them standing. She goes around to stop traffic, any traffic that comes and he lifts the bike off of me. And, but before he lifts the bike off, I notice that I'm sitting there cradling my left arm and I kind of look down and all I see is just a stair step, you know, no tattoos at the time. And um, between my gloves and my suit, I could see the obvious, you know, dislocation of my wrist. And as it turns out, I snapped both bones right here. I was taken by ambulance to the hospital, spent a couple nights in UT. They did surgery to put uh, plates and pins and screws in my wrist and you know actually have those right here I got to keep them they took them out eight months later because my body just really didn't care for it and I was not prepared for the emotions that came after that it you know I'd never had a panic attack before in my entire life and experiencing the panic attacks was, was like a whole nother world. I was, I'd never been this person before. I'd never been that emotional. It was to the point to where my husband couldn't even ride some days because I would break down so hard just seeing him on a bike. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't go up and see my friends on motorcycles. I couldn't even see motorcycle gear without it you know, bringing up some really, really intense emotions. And, but I didn't want that to be my last experience on a bike. So after the surgeries and everything, I would go out and I was built, rebuilding the, uh, the strength in my hand. I would go out, pull the levers on all of them. It's like, okay, which one can I ride first? And it took me two months to be able to, you know, make my hand function well enough that I would be able to ride. And I was riding with my wrist, you know, still in a brace, but like I was determined to get back in that saddle. And, you know, so like, I would pick and choose when I would ride. Some days I could, some days I couldn't. And then fast forward to, two more months. This is four months and one day after the first accident. I'm coming home one night and I hit a boar. A wild pig runs out in front of me up there on the dragon. And as I'm, it, it was like hitting a brick wall. And as I'm flying through the air, I see the tail, my husband's tail lights disappearing in front of me. I'm thinking not again. It's like, I, this cannot be happening to me again in this moment. And again, I was determined that was not going to be my last experience. I was not going to end on that negative note. So two weeks later with a broken collarbone, I'm back on another motorcycle. Not the most genius thing I've ever done, I admit, but I was a determined woman to get back on that bike. And I, I did ride for two, three years afterward, but the anxiety became more and more and I was riding less and less. So in 2011, I ended up just giving up motorcycling. It's like, okay, I can't take this anymore. I'm done. And I thought, okay, the bike goes away. The emotions go away. It turns out it doesn't really work like that. I ended up getting worse afterwards. Um, severe depression, anxiety, PTSD, it became like debilitating to the point where I had lost all my trust in the world because of these events that happened that were out of my control. I didn't leave my house because I did not, I was safe here. I did not trust the world outside of my home. And 
I struggled with that so much to the point that if I went anywhere, my husband had to be the one to drive me. And it was just crippling my life. And after years of dealing with that, it's like, you have to get help. It, it's time. You, you've got to admit it. And, you know, while my physical injuries had healed, and it was this mental one, it was this scar, this injury up here that I was still really struggling with. So I ended up going into counseling and that was hands down one of the best things that ever happened to me. Um, I was learning that I had to get out of this negative mindset, the whys, the what ifs, you know, and why did he do this to me? The blaming, anger, why did this happen to me? What did I do to deserve this? I just, I, with nothing in me, I could not understand why I was being put through this pain of just sitting there and crying myself to sleep at night, you know, grieving for who I used to be. And I would, you know, constantly put myself down like, okay, you're just weak. Why are you not over this already? It's not like you even got hurt that bad. Just get over it. And it's, it's really not that easy to just get on and get over it. So through the counseling, I learned that I had to flip that narrative from the, why did this happen? You know, this happened to me to, you know, not playing a victim anymore that it didn't happen to me. It happened for me. It happened to me for a reason to, for me to learn lessons and for me to grow as a person to become a more positive person. And there's a little quote I keep on the side of my computer that says, every challenge contains a gift. Sometimes you might have to look a little harder, but and it, it took me a while of having that there to really, and it kind of this conference and coming up with this presentation really kind of drove home the, I'm looking for the gift in this challenge that I was presented with. And it was turning my hate into hope. You know, hope that I could change. I could, you know, be a loving, more compassionate person to myself. I didn't have to beat myself up so much. And that I could take the control back. That was my challenge is taking my control back. You know, I control the anxiety. It does not control me. And choosing how I react to events in life. That's my choice. I get to choose how I react. And I had been reacting in a extremely negative way to this. And it was really destroying my health. Um, I wasn't able to function as a human being for a, for a good while because of the damage that this distrust in the world was doing to me. And it's whenever I flipped that narrative to this didn't happen to me, it happened for me, that changed my life so much. It changed how I view the world, how I interact with the world, how I react to events, things that happened to me. And it, think of it like updating your computer or upgrading. You uninstall the bad programming that no longer works for you and you install a new program that does work for you that will help you grow and achieve, you know, being a better person. And um, a few other things that really, that I learned during that time that really helped was to breathe. To just, you know, I, I was finding that I hold my breath a lot, especially during traumatic experiences, I would hold my breath. And I had read somewhere that when you hold your breath, you're holding that trauma and you're storing it inside. That if you can 
remember to breathe and release that you're kind of releasing the trauma in a way you're not holding it and you're not storing it in your body so much and whenever just day-to-day -day things is okay you gotta breathe you gotta breathe and being okay with other forms of releasing the trauma like crying i was never really a crier before this but now I use it as a tool. I, I envision, you know, as the tears are streaming, they're going down my face, that's the trauma leaving my body. I don't see it as a weakness anymore. That it doesn't mean I'm a weak person because I cry. It doesn't mean you're a weak person because you cry. It's you releasing that trauma and not holding on to it in your body any longer. And learning that it's okay to feel things allowing yourself to feel these things instead of just pushing them it's like okay i don't want to deal with this i'm just going to push it i'm going to stuff it don't stuff it down that it it just that stuffing down of those emotions builds and builds and builds to the point that you're going to erupt one day so when it comes up acknowledge it and let it out don't just store it inside. And so I thought that chapter of my life had closed in 2011 whenever I sold my bike. A few years later in 2018, my husband comes to me. He's like, so what do you think about getting another bike? And it's, I was nervous, but I was open to it. I missed it. I missed that thrill, that freedom that escape that motorcycling gave me and I remember the first day that it, we got ended up with a little Benelli TNT 135 a small bike something easy to ride not intimidating and it was sitting outside I had my gear on I'd walk to it look at it no walk away I'd walk back to it I'd sit on it I'd sit on the porch and finally, I was like, it's the day. You've got to do this. So I, I get on the bike. I ride it a few miles. It felt amazing. <laughs> to be back on that bike on my own was one of the most amazing, freeing experiences. And biggest accomplishment. And all I did was ride like six miles from my house and, and come back. Hannah. So after kind of getting back in my groove of being on the motorcycle, I was going for a ride with uh, my friend Sarah Merrill one day. And we did a loop around 28 into Robbinsville and we were getting gas. And I was like, I think today's the day. I'm gonna ride the dragon when we get back. I'm gonna do it. So we get to the store, I talk with Daryl, I'm like, Babe, today's the day. I'm conquering this fear today. This is when I'm going for it. So he outfits the bike with a camera and everything. So we wanted to record this, this milestone moment. You know, I'm shaking like a leaf. Just, I'm sick to my stomach, shaking. There, there's a little bit of traffic, but I'm a determined woman at this point. Nothing's stopping me. And so we head out, Daryl's in front of me in our pickup truck and Sarah's behind me on her R6. I cried <laughs> the entire way across. It, it just, I'm not holding this back. I'm just gonna let on flow. It's happening. You know, I'm having flashbacks to the guy that hit me. And it, with every vehicle that passes, whether it's a car or bike, I'm, I'm just sobbing to you know, please stay in your lane, please don't hit me, please don't hit me. Because in my mind, they're a lot closer than they are. And I had to learn to live in the moment, like have my reality check that you're still upright right now, you're still in motion, no one's hit you, live in this moment, don't live in the future of what ifs, 
don't be living that accident before it happens. And I bring myself back, reminding myself to breathe. He just kept saying, you got this, you got this, I got this, I can do this. And when I got to the other end, it, for me, it was a huge accomplishment making it to the, to the other side. And I, I remembered my breathing techniques. I'm really glad I didn't hold my breath all the way across that. That, that would have been a long breath hold. But just remember, you know, keep yourself calm. You're okay. Live in the reality that you're in right now. And it's like, I'm, I'm living for today. I'm not living, you know, in the past. I'm not living yesterday. I'm not reliving that wreck. I'm not living in the future of what ifs. I'm not. You know, I'm going to stop worrying. Worrying doesn't do, do any good to just sit there and constantly worry about the what ifs. It's like, what if I had a really darn good time? You know, what if this all works out? What if it, I have the time of my life trying to make myself go somewhere that's more positive? And, uh, sorry. I thought in 2011, when I sold that bike, that chapter of my life, I thought that book was closed. I thought it was over. Turns out it was just me ending one chapter and going into another. I had to learn to heal and love myself, have compassion for myself, allow myself to feel these emotions and you know, that was the chapter after the wreck. And now I feel like I'm entering a new chapter as a new motorcyclist. Even though I'm not new to motorcycling, I feel like I'm starting over, I'm starting a new journey. It's slow. You know, you don't have to live up to anyone else's standards. Even, you know, I'll tell myself, you should have been on a bike already. And it's, I'll do this in my own time. When the time is right, when everything is supposed to happen, it will happen. I had hoped I would have another bike last year. Didn't quite happen. You know, I had that in my mind is, you know, okay, let go of that. It'll happen when it's supposed to. And learning to continue to look for the gifts and the challenges I didn't love myself. I didn't have compassion for myself. I couldn't see myself living any other life. It's, what good could this accident have done for me? Well, it gave me the gift of loving myself, for having compassion, more compassion for myself, which leads to having more compassion for others. And I, I tell you that it's, it's a wonderful feeling to be able to have that love in yourself to, to go from having such hate and hopelessness to be able to having the hope that having the positivity in your, your life is so just, it's a, it makes my heart full. It's a very fulfilling feeling. <laughs> Daryl and I were talking recently about me getting back on a motorcycle again, getting my own bike. And he goes, what do you think it's going to do to you if you get into a wreck now? I had to think about it for a few moments. I think I'll be okay. No, I know I'll be okay. Because I'm not the same person. I'm not the same girl that, you know, laid there in the ditch that day. I'm not the same girl that would have to pull over and cry on the side of the road because another car went by too fast or another a bike goes by that's too loud or I see the helmet. That's the one thing I remember from the wreck 
it's the helmet the guy was wearing. And anytime I see one of those, it, I'm getting better, but it, it still brings up these emotions. And it's like, I'm not that girl anymore. I have better tools in my toolbox to work with, to work through this. And I, I really don't think it would affect me in the same way should I get in another wreck now as it did then. One, because I'm a little more prepared uh, mentally, but you know, just knowing that I have had the ability to change and giving myself permission to have bad days, to feel bad, to not beat myself up for it, it's okay. You know, if, if you need to cry, if you need to let them tears stream, like I said, just that's the trauma leaving your body. Don't store that in there so that you have to deal with it for years to come. You don't have to deal with it for years like I did. Acknowledge it and release it. And you have to, or I had to allow myself to feel those feelings so I could heal. That was my gift that came from the challenge of the pain from the wreck. And I have all the faith in the world that if I could learn to love myself and heal and get back on that bike and ride by where I was hit. If I can do that, you can too. And it doesn't just have to apply to motorcycling. Anything in life that you're having trouble with, you can get through it too, just like I did. And when it's the toughest day and you feel like you just can't take it anymore, you're overcome with emotion, you got to feel it, you got to own it, and you got to remember to breathe, to you know, just take however long you need, those breaths in and out. Just remember to breathe and you tell yourself, I've got this, because babe, you do. You've got this, I've got this, we can do this. Um, whew. I did pretty good right up to the end, huh? Uh, but is it, I still get nervous the thought of getting back on a bike. Like I was so excited yesterday, I was looking, and then today it's, okay, maybe I'm not ready yet. But I have faith that when the time is right, I don't know, in that perfect bike, I don't know what I'll get yet, but that, that answer will come to me when it's time. I have faith in that. So yeah, just remember when you're at your wits end and you can't take any more and you think you can't move, go on, just breathe and give yourself those positive affirmations. I've got this. And look for the gift in the challenge because it may not seem like it, but there is, there truly is a gift in every challenge, no matter how big it may seem. So I suppose I'll wrap it up right there and go into the Q&A section. Lori, thank you so much. Um, I know that you can't see, uh, or you probably can see the chat comments, but you haven't been paying attention to them because you've been focusing on sharing your whole self with us. Um, but you're going to get a chance to read those at the end, but um, you have a whole group of people um, thanking you for sharing your story and that your story is helping them. Uh, so I'm going to go into the questions. Um, and I think you probably already answered this, but I'm going to ask you to answer it one more time. Okay. Um, our friend Aaron wants you to repeat your every challenge has its. Um, it's every challenge contains a gift. Perfect. Okay. And uh, Jennifer asked in your recovery, which was more helpful regaining your sense of control or releasing your attachment to control? 
releasing my attachment to the control. Definitely. I, I felt like I had to control every situation and just be on top of it. If I'm in control, nothing can hurt me. And that control was very damaging. And once I kind of released that, just learned to go with the flow of things, all the positivity and the possibility started opening up. Okay, um, another question from Jen. What would you tell someone who is interested in beginning to ride if they were scared of crashing? Um, that it's a very real fear that, that it will happen, but you can't let that, the fear of what could happen stop you. What if you have an amazing time on the bike and it, it's the most wonderful experience you've ever had? Don't let that fear stop you from having those good times. I think that's a fantastic answer. <laughs> uh, another question, how has this experience changed how you interact in the community? Um, I'm a fairly quiet person in general. It has taken a lot for me to open up and like, you know, the, the women's rally that comes here every year last year, I think was, I really connect, started connecting with some of the women. Once I started opening myself up and, and I've met some of the most amazing people through motorcycling. Um, Oh gosh, did I answer the question? I already forgot. I got to babbling. <laughs> has, it, has it changed how you interact with any other communities? I'm more proactive, trying to be more proactive in stepping outside of my comfort zone and looking for the good in everything, not just looking for the bad, looking for the good and positive possibilities. Carla wants to know if you practice yoga. I really, really want to. That's something I'm struggling with right now is I have laid on my yoga mat and I have cried because I, I can't figure out how to do some of the moves, but I'm not ready to give up yet. I want to keep persisting until I'm able to do it. Maybe that should be a new yoga pose, the, the crying Lori. <laughs> Perfect. Love it. <laughs> um, Sherry wants to know how long did it take for you to finally release the need to have to control things? It took until I was about 35 years old. <laughs> so yeah, about the last couple of years. It much better. Okay, um, this is an anonymous question from our group. It sounds like you have the support of your husband, Killboy. <laughs> How has he helped you? Um, it's saying my internet connection is unstable. I apologize if my computer glitches out. But he has one, he's He's my rock. He's been there to support me no matter what. He's never pushed me to, you have to ride again, or you're never riding again. It's, I support that. Awesome. We love Daryl. Uh, Deborah wants to know, I have been through this also, and I found that I really needed to know why I ride, meaning looking at what I get out of it is greater than what I'm afraid of. Uh, what do you think of that approach? Yeah. Um, it, it was definitely a call, like a calling to get back on the bike. That I really wanted to conquer that fear because I loved it so much and letting that fear hold me back was 
literally kind of killing me inside. I didn't have a life and it was important to me to have a life and getting back to the bike has proved to me that I can, I, I can get back to having that awesome freedom. Finding the gift in every challenge. That's right. <laughs> okay, Lori, so it is uh, time for you to guide our group in a meditation exercise, um, something that you said has helped um, you along the way, uh, something that was mentioned earlier in a couple of our workshops, that meditation really helps. And so for anybody who wants to stick around and try this with Lori, she is going to guide us in a meditation over the next five or so minutes. Um, and then we will wrap this workshop up. Um, before you do that, Lori, again, I just want to say thank you so much for sharing your real self and your whole story with us. Um, you are so present and everyone can feel your energy and your love. So thank you. Well, thank you guys so much for, for taking the time to listen to me and you guys for asking me to be a part of this to really finally come out and share my story all these years later. So I'm going to disappear into the background. I'm still here for you. Elisa is still here for you in the background. Go ahead and lead us um, in your guided meditation and uh, I'll see you. I'll see you in a couple minutes. Okay. All right, so bear with me. This is my first time, so just kind of got to go with what has worked for me thus far. And I'll, you know, you want to sit comfortably. And the goal is, is to just relax. You can close your eyes and focus on your breath as you take it in. And release it out. It helps to count it. Breathe into a count of four. Hold it and pause. And then breathe out to a count of four. You, you want to focus on where you feel that breath. It can be where the air enters your nose. It can be on your chest. It can be on your belly. Just Stay with that breath and focus on it. And with every breath, as you release the breath, you release the tension in your body. You can start at the top of your head. And relax your jaw. And then moving on down to your shoulders. Let your shoulders relax. Continue to breathe in and out. Now you can go down into your chest, into your heart center. Let that relax. And with every breath out, that is just releasing more tension. That's releasing any stress that you've been feeling from today. With every breath, you're just you're blowing it out. With every inhale, you're inhaling positivity and light and fullness and love. And now you'll move on down into your belly. You can still feel your breath. And breathe out. And moving on down into your hip area and the pelvic area. Let that area relax as well. Any tension that you may be holding. With every exhale, you get a little more relaxed. And then moving on down into your legs. Any tension that you may be holding there is gone with your next exhale. Moving on down into your feet. You can feel your feet on the ground. Feel it grounding you, anchoring you to the earth. And 
and just feeling the peace in your body as you release the tension. Imagine that you have just this glowing light that glows from within your body and it, it radiates out to everyone around you. And any negativity that comes is just absorbed by that light. It does not exist. And keep focusing on your breaths in and out. As you're feeling more relaxed, the tension has just melted away from your body. And you'll slowly start bringing your awareness back. And you can you know, feel your feet on the ground. You can feel your butt on your seat, and your back on the chair. And slowly open your eyes and now I hope you feel just a little more peaceful and always remember to breathe. And that will conclude my breathing grounding meditation. Oh. He did that. Thank you. Thank you. After, <laughs> after a whole day of doing, it was nice to be in the being. <laughs> <laughs> I talked about it in my opening, you know, talking about I do a lot of doing, and trying to do more being. And uh, I think that's a common common thing so it's absolutely perfect i had no idea what type of meditation you were going to do but it's absolutely perfect thank you so much thank you i i had no clue either it's like whatever comes out is what comes out <laughs> and thank you so much for sharing your story and um just being so authentic and real i mean i felt your heart the whole time and your presence the whole time you were talking thank you Thank you for the opportunity. It's appreciated. Yeah. yeah. We're kind of neighbors, I think. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, so I'm going to invite you, Lori, if you have time. Uh, I know it's been a long day for the presenters, but if you have time and want to join the um, networking conversation, um, again, for everybody, it's not like this. We're not talking at you. Um, this is actually the conclusion of our presentations for today. Um, the 8 p.m. networking session, connection session is optional. Um, some of the presenters will be in there um, depending on what's going on in their lives and their time zones and, and stuff. Uh, Brittany and I will be there. Brittany's gone over there now to, to set that up and uh, um, that'll be ready right at 8 o'clock. <sighs> Thanks everyone for a great day. Um, if you're looking for how to join that connection session, I did put it in the chat. I will do it again. If you take a look at your secret page here, <clears throat> just put it in the chat. Take a look at your secret page there and then uh, click on the link. Go down below the Friday presentations. Um, you'll see the two Friday connection sessions. One was at five and the upcoming one is at eight. Um, and it's been such a joy hosting everyone today um, and seeing all the feedback from our presenters. Um, please uh, feel free to fill out those polls that the system sends you afterwards. We'd love your feedback because we want to be providing more and more great content. Like we said, we're already thinking up our next uh, our, our next ways to support and encourage and uh, and and inspire you. Um, and we will be back here at um, 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. There won't be a keynote in the morning. We're going to start off with uh, with 
Jan Plesner and the, for Motorcycle Industry Hacks to Land Your Dream Employer. And uh, I'm going to introduce her because uh, we've known each other for a long time. So um, we're going to end just a couple minutes early. Feel free to um, take a break and join us or not at 8 o'clock. Get a glass of wine, get a cup of coffee, whatever you do at this whatever time zone you're in, whatever you do this time of day, and we'll look forward to connecting to you there. And we can all talk together uh, in, the, in the connection session. So thanks for an awesome day. Thank you again, Lori. And see you tomorrow, everyone. Bye for now. <laughs>